Welcome all denizens of the Underhive. Today I am making a dive, a bar, a drinking hole, whatever you want to call it. And hopefully by the end of this I'll try to work out some name that's slightly remotely funny because that's how I work. Um, but we've had Amaral's Snack Bar before, which is obviously a food outlet. And I want to have several outlets based on shipping containers. So our humble shipping container is half built here, as you can see. And I want to talk you through my process of doing this. So I don't just want a bar set up here. Um, I actually want stools, an actual place for them to sit. So rather than just a simple single container, I want to double the width of the container. So I'm hoping to cut those little tabs off there that you see, because that's not going to join very nicely, is it? And have two, yeah, that's right, two of these containers side by side. Um, so I do imagine a whole wall of these food outlets at some stage that are pretty much one width, one single container. But with this particular thing, I would like an actual bar top and actual stools. Um, so this one will be a little bit wider. Uh, and of course you could just have just a bar outlet rather than actually a place where people can sit down. So the single width container with the front on it, cutting some panamas out maybe like most people do and just have little hatches um, so at night like these panels could close down or you could have mesh over the top so people can't break in but I imagine my bar will be open 24-7 it will never be locked down, it will never be closed because certain members of the underhive do need a drink at any hour or all the hours. So that's what I'm going to imagine. I'm going to make an, uh, a full time bar, something that's open constantly all the time. So if you're anything like me, you've got a few kits lying around, and these are fantastic. I've got a few of these lying about. I say a few, I'd rather not say how many I've got. <clears throat> so what I've done is I've cut the side piece off here. I've shaved down the side and I've stuck three together as well as cutting the tap off because I want them, if you noticed, the hollow on the back, can exactly turn them around and use it that way around. They look a bit ropey. So what I've done is, I said cut the side pieces off, stuck them side by side. Oh, there's a bit of sprue there or shaving even. And I've stuck the taps, which were on the side there, on the front. Now I would like that on the back of my bar, just down there, and I'm thinking a bar shelf. So in this kit, I am mainly using two shipping containers, a little bit of your friendly plastic, uh, plastic card, which everybody should own. Um, if you don't have any, regular card will do. Plastic card is better, because obviously, regular card, even if it's thick card stock. Um, if it takes paint, it could warp. Uh, plastic card, something like this. A lot more durable. It is literally plastic card. So a nice thick card stock. And I'm also using, for me it's new, the Underhive Market. So in the Underhive Market, you've got some great options there. You've got some nice tarps, would be great for a bar. You've got some mugs. Um, little drinking containers. I'm thinking a sick bucket because there is a bucket in that kit. I'm thinking that'd be a nice sick bucket. Um, I also have from the servo hauler set a nice fire extinguisher because health and safety in the underhive is key, right? Sure. Um, and I have a bucket of Necromunda little bits I may use. So I'm quite a fan of Marvel Crisis Protocol. So in the Deadpool set, when you have the taco truck, there's some tacos and some plates and some cups. I'm not entirely sure there would be ice, so I, I might paint them up as something a bit filthy, floating in your drink. 
Um, I think ice would probably be only reserved for the the wealthy in my head. Um, but I've got loads of bits in this container, so if you are hobbying over the years, you will start collecting some spares and separate them and put them in containers and those are your bits containers. So for me, I have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of Tyranid bits, so I have several sorting boxes. Uh, I have just regular 40k terrain bits. Uh, as you can see there, I had some Marvel bits. Uh, it's nice to have a bits container of some shape, size or variety. So in this box, as you can hear me rattling around, I have loads of little pieces collected from different games that I thought might be good for Necromunda. Um, once again, the little cups from Marvel Crisis Protocol, if you have um, the Deadpool set, like I mentioned. But on most of the bases, you'll find something like that. I'll zoom right in. Which I haven't trimmed off and tidied up yet. But that's a bottle, for those who can't see clearly. Uh, they have cups and crushed cans as well. So here's a little... I'm trying to pick up the crushed can out of my bits box. A little crushed can. Um, little plastic drinking containers, plastic cups, things like that. Which I thought was also ideal. Um, although I will have to drill out the top because it, it doesn't nurk me how it's completely flat and smooth on the end. But little bits like that are always worth keeping. Uh, Ross's rule number one when it comes to terrain making or hobby building, never throw away anything. So even if you're clipping off bits, uh, so like the, the side bits on here, I've still kept. So these little bits here, I've still got quite a few of them. So they could be useful for like, um, I don't know, a water plant, treatment plant. Uh, you can paint them up so they look clear and glass-like. Um, so you could have fluids bubbling in there. Um, you could have it as some kind of fire suppression system. You could even have it as Prometheum to use in your flamethrowers, things like that. So always keep an open mind. Never chuck anything away. Uh, for example, I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of containers in 40k. I, I've bought loads of these containers. So you get a shed load of ammo crates with those. So I've stuck those together and thought that would be pretty cool for the base of my bar and then stick a, a nice worktop to it. Um, purely because nothing is ever wasted in the underhive and I would like to keep it so it still looks like containers, ammo, ammo boxes, whatever you want to call it, um, in the underhive. So I so said nothing goes to waste there, nothing goes to waste for me. So that's why Necromunda is perfect for me, because I'm a massive, massive hoarder. Uh, reuse, recycle. So that's what I'm planning to do. That's the base of my bar. As you can see, I've stuck them together with some good old GW plastic glue. I'm going to put a nice bar top to that. And lace the top of the bar with possibly vomit, uh, cans and containers and bottles and things like that. So this is stage one. I won't do the complete... Um, <laughs> run down and build because you guys might get bored of me scratching my head and umming and anding because that's what I'm good for um, but I will drop into this video every, every um, couple of hours and show you my progression so far so so far that's my initial plan that can all go out the window yes I do like to draw on a bit of paper and have a rough sketch and a rough plan but as I go through I will change my mind quite often <laughs> so enjoy this bumpy bumpy ride. So I measured up where I want the um, big drinking barrels to go and I want a shelf to go underneath them. So two things, I need to measure the height of the shelf where I wanted it to go and have something propped underneath. Maybe some Diddy RSJs or something like that. And the next thing is, I don't know if you can see that, I have scored and scraped anything along its path so it, the glue bonds on more surface area less likely to break off not that this thing's going to be chucked around but I don't want anything snapping off the GW plastic glue is pretty good 
but obviously more surface area, more contact, hopefully lasts a bit longer. So this is the next stage, obviously counter, uh, vomit bucket, tiny little coke can, loads of little bottles. Um, this is just for ease of painting, but that's what it will look like. And I've left a little section there to glue the 3D printed bar stools. Um, so you can use any bar stools you want. I was even toying with using half an oil drum um, or even putting half an oil drum on one of those thumb tacks. So I've seen a few of those on Instagram. I thought that's a great idea. Uh, but uh, Ben from the Two Peas uh, has a 3D printer and he has a massive, um, that's right ladies, Necromunda terrain layout and uh, <clears throat> he's signed up for Loot Studios and he's found some fantastic um, like cyberpunk stools and he said why not try these and they look great. So I'm going to get a few of those printed off and I'm going to stick them there spaced out fairly evenly, even a Goliath could sit on that with his chunky butt. Um, so now I'm going to secure the shelf uh, and some offcuts of the plastic art. I started making some roll steel joists, that's not a good one. That's a good one. Uh, I'm going to plonk them underneath. So they're supposed to be slightly wonky in a way and slightly beaten up, but not as beaten up as the first one. So my idea is I was going to put one slap bang in the middle, one over there, and on this side I was going to put something kind of fun uh, to prop it up with. So I was experimenting with maybe a fire extinguisher, a little bit too big, it'd be quite funny. So rather than using a fire extinguisher in the manner that it was intended for in Necromunda, obviously they propping up a <laughs> a massively heavy uh, plinth with a load of beer and stuff on it. I thought that'd be pretty funny. Uh, a message one of my local chat groups uh, that we're all going to play a Necro Monday campaign through. Um, <laughs> loads of silly ideas from a Nurgling, which would be fantastic. I would love to see a little chubby little Nurgling holding up a shelf, but maybe that's a bit too chaosified. Um, to a squat. Squats are a bit bigger than that. Um, <clears throat> I don't mean the you know the new uh, remake of squats leagues Votan. I mean squat 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 because I do have a few squats, um, but it would have to be a squat squat to fit underneath that shelf, uh, as it's only two centimeters tall. Um, I like the mung vase from the Underhive Marketplace, so the same place I got that tarp from. Uh, slightly too big, unless I cut the top of it off. Um, so in the end, I found an old school. I think this was Gorkamorka, possibly. Badly painted because it was the 90s, and uh, yeah, 50 coats of paint is good, right? Uh, so I'm thinking a fuel can underneath, just propping up the bar, might look kind of cool. So I'm beginning to block in some basic colours. So I like the old Joker scheme, which was green and purple. Um, basically. I had some coloured primer from Army Painter um, called Alien Purple and I thought it's bright, it's garish, I like the look of it so I wanted that for the base colour and what goes well with purple? Green. So I started basing in some colours um, and started using uh, nearly for what it's called, AK Interactive's Streak and Grime I uh, thought that's pretty cool. So I doused the whole thing, slightly watered down, and then it used a Q-tip to clean up the raised areas. So you can see a slight variation in the green there. Not a lot, but I will make it pop a bit more. So I want to get a fine line between popping, as in it looks uh, eye-catching, nice and bright and vibrant, yet somehow still grimdark. So getting a right kind of combo with that. But all my metals, I'm going to go with just a grey and I'm gonna throw the wash over it as well, and then start picking out, like I said, with the cotton wool bud, and then start picking out some of the raised surfaces. Then I wanna start making it nice and rusty. So this is the basic scheme, it's gonna be for the whole thing, and then I'm gonna start adding some rust on things like that. 
and I started blocking in the main part of the dive itself. But do you remember me saying, oh, I was thinking about using it fire extinguisher or something like that. So James from our local Necromunda meet um, very kindly donated me some Necron parts. So I thought it'd be funny to have a Necron foot used as a table leg. So I've got two of those RSJs over there, remember? And I've started blocking in the basic colours and starting weathering things up. Little rust bits on rivets. Here, for the vomit bucket, I have put Nurgle's rot inside. Yeah, lovely. And to give that lovely rusted effect, I've used uh, Kragen Roses. Now, this is actually supposedly for painting walls, but I paint miniatures with it. Um, this stuff is fantastic. I have done a video on it before in the past, and it is glorious. You can make techniques. Um, you can make that kind of outcome using various different techniques. You can use it as a wash, just makes things look grubby. You can put two coats on something and it's really, really rusty. One coat, semi-rusty. So that's what I've done with this one. That's just one coat, thick-ish, but making it like a, a rusty bucket. It's got a fantastic texture on it. Can you hear that? Smooth plastic. Rough plastic. Oh. And I started blocking in the basic colours. So I want to paint it all up before I start adding my lovely resin bottles that I got from um, my brain is fried today. Got from Mighty Lancer Games. So that's um, some of the products I got from Green Stuff World. And the fire extinguisher that I was gonna put there, couldn't do without it. So I put it there, mainly to hide the wire junction between the crate and the sign itself. But yeah, that's starting to get there. I'm now going to attach those lovely bar stools that I mentioned previously, uh, that Ben from the Two Peas have printed off for me. I've just primed them up just with a rattle can at the moment, so they're just pretty boring black. And I'll we'll stick them on the bar, which will look pretty cool. Uh, although Goliath butts may be slightly big for this, but I'm not shaming you boys. So I'll paint these guys up before sticking them to the bar. Um, as much as I want this to be grim, dark, and grubby, I will start picking out some raised areas as well to make it look a little bit nicer. And don't forget the back wall, nice and plain. We can't have that, can we? So what are we going to do about that? This is what we're going to do. So, these fantastic posters I are by Carl Johnson. So, this guy I've been following for ages on Instagram. He's an absolute legend. Artwork is amazing. And I was even listening to my favourite podcast at the moment, which is Sun City Radio. And he was being interviewed on there. The guy is an absolute legend. I mean, it, yes, his work is lovely. I'm not denying that at all. But it's just a pleasant guy to listen to. And uh, yeah, he is really steeped in Necromunda lore. So he has done some banners, rugs, posters uh, for everybody to print off. Look at that. So he's even done a frame plastic card, make wall panel, paint, and wash. Little um, tips and tricks for him, it's written on here. But this is uh, his class. I mean, look, some city radio I was just talking about. Some posters. That. Glorious, glorious. Lovely, grubby, proper necromunda. Real grim dark. Worthy of Blanzichu style. <laughs> It fits so perfectly well. I could go on for hours about this stuff, so please feel free to pause the video and check it out. Or just go on that link. The guy is class. He really, really is. Loads and loads and loads of posters. 
to add to any of your walls or columns, or in my case, back of my dive. There's so much cool stuff. Proper gang posters, just graffiti. Yeah, share the love indeed. Seriously guys, please check them out on Instagram. At least. So good, so good. Faith is your shield. Yeah, digging the posters, buddy. Um, obviously, I've been following you for a long, long time. You really do have fantastic work. But I just, you just can't wrap your head around it. How good is that? So I will be, look at how many different pages. Loads and loads and loads and loads. Hazard signs, toxic waste signs, gene stealer coat signs. I was going to do some freehand gene stealer coat logos. But, um, yeah, like, what's better than having this stuff on the back of a bar? Nothing. That's the answer. So... I'll be cutting a few of those out and sticking them on the back of the bar. Okay, so uh, another update. So just uh, stuck the, the stools in. Obviously I haven't weathered them up yet. They're a bit too clean. And I've been starting to put the little glasses in, the little bottles there and there. Of course, not nearly done yet. I'm gonna put some hard coat on those bottles as well to make them more glass like and some detail inside there I have painted the trunk picked up some detail did a little bit of graffiti poster there poster there and who could forget obviously I didn't mention it a second ago but the old Sump City radio that's the first of many posters I'm sure in my hive, worshipping those dudes. That's the first Sump City Radio poster in my personal hive. First of many, I am sure. So, weathering up the stools, put some gloss on those uh, bottles in the back, and then finally sticking my sign on. Okay, so I made up my neon sign. Um, I have uh, recorded a video on how I made that, but a brief little look, ooh, ah, nicely chipped and beaten up, and weathered just very, very slightly. I could go a bit rougher, but yeah, graffiti, posters, I have now weathered up my stools, I'll turn the light down just a little bit, it is a tab right here, so i smack the camera while I'm at it. Um, so yeah, weather up stools just a little bit, just to make them look a little bit grimy. And I have put some gloss on the bottles. So at the moment, it's looking like so. I want to have the lid detachable. So if I needed to put a barman in there, or even press the button inside here, just inside there, to turn the sign on, I can, so I will do that now. So if you can see that, I'll turn the light off. Ooh, ah, muff dive. And it should go on a cycle when it start flashing in a second. The sign, not me. There we go. And it should get faster. And it will turn itself off. Uh, press it again and it will stay on permanently. I uh, don't want to flatten the battery though, but I have stuck the battery holder in there. I say stuck, I haven't actually physically stuck it with super glue. Um, just magnetised in there so I can whip it out anytime I want and change the battery. But yeah, it's looking pretty good, it's looking pretty good. Uh, I think I'm going to uh, edge highlight just a little bit more just to make this thing pop. I'm pretty much calling it done. 